Hello, and welcome to the third installment of the Enterprise Best Practices blog. My name is Neil Donlovich, Principal Architect for Versa Networks. This week, we're going to focus on why enterprises should require a secure multi-tiered architecture when deploying SD-WAN. So why is a secure multi-tiered architecture a requirement when deploying SD-WAN? Traditionally, enterprises would actually contract with service providers in order to purchase private circuits, MPLS, PIP, dedicated TDM circuits. These circuits would provide connectivity between the branches and the branches in the data center. If the enterprise required internet access or access to other remote networks, then the enterprise would create demilitarized zones or DMZs in one or more of their data centers. The enterprise would also create mechanisms for authentication, authorization, and accounting, AAA, for all permitted flows that actually were allowed to go through the DMZ into the enterprise and also record any illegal attempts to try to break through the DMZ. In the early days, firewalls were considered the main security appliance for securing the DMZ. However, reliance upon a single security option was actually a rather foolish network design. A failure of that single security appliance could either one disrupt connectivity to the internet and these remote networks or at worst actually allow the uh, threat actors to bypass the security set shortly after the realization of the single point of failure enterprises began deploying perimeter security functions such as firewalls intrusion detection prevention systems ips ids um, network address translation, NAT, uh, segmented routing, uh, proxies, um, encrypted connections. Thus, the evolution to a secure multi-tiered security architecture began. Today, secure enterprises don't store any critical data in their DMZ. Most applications today are based upon, at minimum, a three-tier architecture, with many using connectivity that is secured and secured at least at a TLS 1.2 or greater. Let's review the different multi-tier architecture approaches. To start, let's begin with a basic foundation and assume a flat network between the enterprise and the customers that need to access the enterprise business model. In this model, everyone has access to the critical information as seen here, both the enterprise and the consumer. However, this also implies that the threat actors or hackers also have direct access to these systems. This affords the hackers the ability to poke, prod, scan, and exploit any vulnerability in the system to gain access. Even if this system here has the most advanced and impenetrable security that has never been exploited. Remember, what was secure 20 years ago might not be secure today, and what is secure today is not guaranteed to be secure in five years. For example, just imagine that someone would have said five years ago that we were going to create a connection, a secure connection between this mobile device and that critical data store, and that we were going to use the most advanced secure algorithm possible, TLS 1.1. Now. Back then, we would have thought, hey, you know what? Great. No one can break it. It's never been broken. But as we know today, this is not allowed. We now need at least TLS 1.2, if not TLS 1.3, in order to actually secure this connection. However, who knows? In five years, 10 years, who knows what it is? This probably won't be allowed. And we'll need even more security to actually provide this secure connection. So relying on the secure posture to actually create this connection that goes between these two sets is probably not your best option. The second option is a two-tier architecture. In this two-tier architecture, the first tier would have perimeter security suite to validate the connections, providing all the AAA policies for both permitted and illegal entry attempts, and would pass permitted connections onto the second tier for access to the critical data. While this method is significantly improved over the direct access model, the fact remains that by exploiting vulnerabilities in the primary zone, the threat actor and actually gain access fairly easily to the second zone. 
Usage of NAT and discrete segmented routing, NAT here and segmented routing, meaning these are discrete, could make the threat actor's job harder to penetrate the primary zone, but most of the systems would actually have enough information that once compromised would yield a good enough blueprint for the threat actor to follow in order to compromise the rest of the enterprise network. So this brings us to a three-tiered or multi-tiered architecture. In this scenario, each zone is secured by a secure perimeter suite, engages in encrypted connections, utilizes discrete segment routing, and one or more tiers utilizes network address translation, or NAT. The critical data store is th stored in at least a third or greater tier. Unlike the two-tier approach, compromise of a system in the first tier does not provide a good enough footprint or blueprint for the threat actor to gain access to the critical data store as it's not stored in the next level. Given that multiple security perimeter suites are utilized, this makes it far more difficult for the threat actor to successfully exploit and navigate all the necessary systems without being detected. So you'd have to exploit this one, then get through here, exploit this one, and then get to this guy while navigating all the secured stuff here. Utilization of secure connections between these two systems also complicates the ability of the threat actor to successfully compromise the next level in a multi-tiered architecture. As enterprises look to transform the network, they should deploy an SD-WAN solution which supports a secure multi-tier architecture. And in fact, here at Versa Networks, we have ingrained this principle throughout our entire architecture and solution offering. No node within the SVWAN solution has direct access to the Versa Director, the database, operations interface for all configurations, policy, certificates, etc. In order for a node to access the Versa Director, it must first create an IPsec tunnel to one of the SD-WAN controllers. Even during zero-touch provisioning, or the ZTP process, an IPsec connection must be made to the controller for the SD-WAN branch to retrieve its initial configuration. The SD-WAN controller has a secure connection to the director, which advertises the branch management IP address. During ZTP, this is a proxy IP provided by the controller. An overlay network is established between the SD-WAN branch, CPE, and the SD-WAN controller. In this manner, the conversation is encrypted through the underlay network and no direct access from the underlay network exists. Once the underlay network is established, Versa Director communicates through these tunnels to the branch controllers. The Versa network also supports multi-secure controller connections between branch and director. This enables the natural ability to build a multi-tiered and resilient architecture for control. Versa Networks has achieved the NSS Labs recommendation for next-gen firewalls and intrusion protection systems to further protect the enterprise critical sensitive data. So in conclusion, Enterprises should only consider deploying SD-WAN solutions which support a multi-tiered secure architecture to provide protection to the access of the critical sensitive data that the enterprise wants to protect. Until next week, when we focus on the importance of failure domains, network segmentation, and device redundancy to provide a resilient SD-WAN solution. Thank you.